Welcome, Phillies Church, to Can You Believe It? Our first online service during our lock in. <laughs> I can't believe it, it's happened. But we praise God that this morning we're able to come to you to, directly to your homes. Uh, we're excited to be able to just share with you today God's uh, presence because the Bible says, Where two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst. So if you're in your home with your family, uh, it's time to welcome Jesus. It's time to get him into your homes. It's time to hear from him. It's time to be blessed by him this morning. So we're excited to share this experience with you. We're going to open the service in prayer and we're going to ask God to bless the word. We even have worship this morning. We're even going to take up an offering this morning. It's going to be a proper, proper service. So get ready. Uh, if you're in your, in your uh, gowns, uh, in your sleep shorts, who cares? You're at home, so that's all right. It's cool, but we're going to have an awesome time just praising God together. So right there in your lounges, in your bedrooms, hopefully not in your toilets, okay? But we are going to actually open this time in prayer and ask God to bless us with His presence. You ready? Come on, close your eyes. Lord, thank you for this wonderful opportunity we have to gather together via a, a live stream, via the internet. Lord, what a blessing this is. I pray, Lord, that today as we worship you in spirit and truth, that, Lord, you would just come and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the word that will be preached later, that, Lord, you would speak to us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that, Lord, we have technology like this today where we can gather in our homes and just declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Right, we're going to tune in to Andy and family all the way in Musenberg, so enjoy this time of worship. Blessings. Amen. What's up, Pullies? We are here today from the Dupree residence. Yes, and the Dupree you know residence. No lockdown is going to keep us from praise and worshiping our King today. So we are excited. Um, we want to encourage you to get involved. Um, join us as we praise and worship today. Andy, let's hit it.
greater than the coronavirus. Wow, wasn't that just awesome? Thank you to Andy and family uh, for just blessing us with that worship. Uh, I want to encourage you for the rest of the week to continue to worship God. Continue in your homes to praise Him. Play that music loud. Get excited. You need exercise and dance for Jesus, all right? It's just a wonderful thing to do. Once again, we are blessed with an incredible worship team. They did an amazing job uh, this morning. So please send them a WhatsApp, send them an SMS, send them a video call. Just say thanks to Andy and team. Wasn't that amazing? Well, um, we are now going to be taking up the offering. Um, obviously, it's a little bit different. We don't have the bags that's going to go around. So I'm going to remind you, you can bring your offerings uh, via Zappa, via EFT. Um, and uh, also your prayers are appreciated at this time for us here at Fully's Church. Just a short message, not going to take too much of your time. When we go to the story about Jesus and the 5,000 plus that were gathered, you know the story, they were hungry, the disciples come and they say, Jesus, I think it's time to send them home to pick and pay. Luckily it's not a lock, uh, it wasn't a lock in those days. Send them all away and uh, let them get something to eat. And Jesus uh, really just surprises them and says, hey, you feed them. You make a way for them. And I can imagine the panic. I mean, when you don't have the resources, when you don't have enough, we've been there before. All of us have been there before. We know the feeling of that, the absolute panic. Um, but Jesus still gives them the challenge. Guys, make it happen. I believe in this time period that we're living in, we got to make it happen through our prayers, through our giving, through every area of our lives. we got to make it happen. I love the fact there was one little boy that stood up. He was accounted for. He stood up by faith and gave what he had. Now, you can't tell me in the midst of all those thousands of people that no one else had anything. I'm pretty sure there are those who stashed away a little sandwich, those who stashed away a little cool drink. They had things stashed away, but when it came to giving, they did not give. The blessing I see in this story is simply this. That young boy that gave, he, he was able to see a miracle take place because of what he gave. This morning, I believe in your giving as you sow. We can sow into a miracle for our country. We can sow into a miracle for our church. We can sow into a miracle for your life. That young boy saw thousands and thousands of people being fed because of his small gift, because of his small offering. Not only that, the Bible says there were 12 baskets left over. It doesn't say where it went to, but I have a suspicion that that young boy, he inherited 12 baskets of food. Why? Because he sowed his little. I'm asking you this morning, sow. Give. Allow God to bless you. Amen. We're going to take up the offering at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a privilege for me to be able to share God's word this morning. Like I say, the first week of being locked in. Uh, first week where we have to depend on Jesus Christ for everything. So I want to depend upon him this morning, if that's okay. And I want you to join me in prayer as we pray over God's word at this time. We're going to ask God to speak to us in this moment of crisis, in this moment where there's a lot of bad news out there. Uh, um, but you know what? This morning we're going to ask God to speak to us, encourage us by His Holy Spirit. If you agree with that, I'd like you to press a like. I'd like you to put a comment down there. I'd like you to, we've got host teams out there that are busy communicating with you live at the moment. So you know what? Just communicate, agree with the prayer. When I say something that you feel it's God speaking to you, and if you come from a Baptist background, you don't like to shout in church, well, you're not in church now. You can shout in your own homes by pressing a big like. I believe on, on Facebook and all those other platforms, there's people shouting, little, little, little men. You can just click and put on there. You know, do whatever you want to, but let's get involved with the sermon. Amen. And share, share, share. That's what I'm asking you to do. But now, 
Let's come to Jesus. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to say thank you for this word this morning. I pray that, Lord, you'd use me as an instrument, Lord, just an instrument, to speak the truth today, to speak, speak life, to speak hope, uh, because, Lord, this is what we need. We need Jesus today. And, Lord, as we turn our attention to focus upon Easter that's coming up, I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, Lord, will just begin to remind us of who you are. You are the risen King. You are alive. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. There is nothing impossible for you. So, Lord, we pray, encourage us, build us up today through your word and through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Now, when I said Amen, you've got to click like, you've got to click share, something. Get involved. Amen. Yes, I heard you. Yes, all the way from Musenberg. I heard you. That's fantastic. Well done. Right, the scripture today that I'm going to be focusing on is in John chapter 11, uh, verse 25. And this is the words that we want to hear Jesus speak today in our lives. Jesus said to her, said to you, said to you, said to you, that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. Come on, that's a powerful scripture right there. That's something that should get you excited. That's something that should get the likes going, the hearts going, all kinds of stuff going. Why? Because Jesus is life. So let's just for a moment put this verse in context. John chapter 11 verse 1. We read about a man named Lazarus, uh, a man that uh, was sick. And let me just say, we're going to find out as you read this portion of Scripture, that he wasn't just a little sick. He didn't just have a little sniffle, a little cough. Uh, uh, this, this man, he was sick. And the Bible actually tells us later on that the sickness actually causes him to die. So he was from a town called Bethany and the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Um, and they wanted to send a message to Jesus. They wanted Jesus to know what the situation was in. How many people can relate to that this morning? We want Jesus to know what the situation is right here in South Africa, right here in Fishhook, Musenberg, Glencairn, Simonstown, wherever you're from. We want Jesus to know what is going on. The good news is nothing takes Jesus by surprise. Come on, I want you to understand something right there where you are. This coronavirus is not a surprise to Jesus. Uh, the government of South Africa might have been surprised. The world might have been surprised. The church obviously was surprised, but Jesus Jesus wasn't. So you got to know something that Jesus is never surprised. But they want to get a message to Jesus. And this is what they tell him. Listen to these words. I want you to focus on these words for a moment. This is what they tell Jesus. Lord, the one you love is sick. H hold on, hold on. I want you to get that again. The one you love is sick. The one you love is sick. Now, if I'm going to make a request to Jesus, let's just get this real for a moment. I, I would be sending a letter or sending a note or sending a message or setting up a prayer that goes simply like this. Hey, Lord Jesus, it's me, Ryan, the guy that preaches every Sunday for you, the guy that prays hours to just see breakthrough. The God that brings these tithes on time. The God that, uh, that attends church all the time. The God that treats his wife with love and gentleness. Uh, the good God. Uh, Lord, you know me because of what I do for you. Isn't this amazing? That Mary and Martha do not focus on what they do for God or how much Lazarus loves Jesus. They focus on the fact that Jesus loved Lazarus. You see, this for me is an incredible lesson. Incredible lesson about Easter. And I want to be focusing on Easter for the next couple of weeks. You see, Easter reminds us all of the fact that Jesus died for us while we were yet in our sins. It was never about what we could do for Him. It was never about how, what we can accomplish to please Him. It was always about the fact that He loved us. I've got good news for you out there. Jesus loves you. In the middle of your mess, in the middle of your trauma, in the middle of your crisis, listen, it's not about what we have done. It's about what He has done. That's what Easter is all about. I've got good news. You see, I don't want to be spreading bad news at this time. I know the stats and figures might not look good, but here's the good news. Even though we die, we live because He is the resurrection and the life. 
That's who Jesus is. Come on, church, right there in your homes. That's, that's a moment where you can press a like and press a heart and put a comment down because that is the truth. Mary and Martha knew the only thing that was going to turn Jesus' heart was his own love and his own passion for Lazarus. They did not say the one who loves you. They said the one you love. You see, Lazarus and family have got bad news. Right in the middle of a good life, when everything is going right and everything looks good, all of a sudden there's sickness. Isn't it just like today? Isn't it just like how Corona has disrupted our lives? Here Lazarus has taken a turn for the worse. You see, ladies and gentlemen, right there in our homes, we've got to acknowledge something. Some of us, we're okay. Some of us, financially, we're fine. Some of us, our health is good. But there's some of us amongst us right here watching today that are going through tough times, that are going through hard times. Can I ask you a question? And let's just be honest for a moment. That news, the one you love is sick. Imagine you receive news today that the one you loved is sick. Whether it's your child, your husband, your wife, your, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, someone you love is sick. Can I, can I can be honest? Can we just get real for a moment? If you had the means and the power to to, to heal them, if you had the means and power to help them, if you had what it takes to make sure that they would live, would you do something about it? You see, I know the answer. If the one you loved was sick, if the one you loved had a need, you would step in and you would help. Can I say this? Do we think we're better than God? Because here's the thing, God loves us. And if you are willing to sacrifice to, to, to help the ones you love, don't we think that God would come and help us in this day and age? You see, God loves you and He's moved by you. He's moved by your prayers. Don't you think for one moment that God has not heard you? God loves you. Maybe some of you have heard bad news. Your dream marriage has been turned into a nightmare. Your close friend at work has stabbed you in the back. You've a call from the principal and your children aren't doing as well as you want. The good news is this. No matter what situation you're facing, you have a Father in heaven that loves you. He loved you so much that He sent Jesus Christ to die in our place. That's the Easter message. Now in the middle of all this, something amazing happens. In the middle of this whole story, Something amazing happens with Jesus. Watch this, what the verse says in John chapter 11, verse 4. When Jesus heard, he said this. Listen to this. Listen to this. The sickness is not to death, but, keyword, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God might glor be glorified by it. When he heard the news, he's made these words. The sickness is not, not the end to death. He says, it is for the glory of God. Easter reminds us of this. This is so important. Please hear this. Easter reminds us that just because something looks bad now, with God, He is able to turn things around. Maybe people have been speaking death over our country. Maybe people have been speaking death over our families. Maybe people have been speaking death over our finances. Here's the good news. Jesus can turn anything around for His glory. His glory. I believe that Corona, now you've got to hear me very, 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 very carefully here. Corona is not from God. But God has the ability to turn Corona around so that His name can be glorified. Come on, church. That's a moment you can get up uh, from your lounge suites and stand cheering God. That's a moment if you're on your toilet, uh, don't stand up. But praise God where you are. Here's good news. Come on. We've got to praise God because He is good and He's good all the time. The very thing you would never want to happen to you. God, I believe, has the ability to turn around for His glory. And the worst news you could receive, He could turn around and make it good news. That's the Lord, the God that I serve. So let me give you a quick summary from verse 5 to 14. What happens? What happens? Jesus hears the bad news. Jesus hears that the one He loves is dying, is sick. What does Jesus do? Let me sum it up. He does nothing. Yeah, you heard me right. The one who loves you did nothing. Some of us, we might be in that place today where we're like, Jesus, you, I know you love me. I know you got my back. I know you want the best for me. But God, I prayed. Nothing's happening. Have you ever been in that place before? Are you in that place right now? Well, this is the case with Lazarus. He does nothing. Then all of a sudden, two days later, 
he says to his disciples, hey, let's go back to Judea. Let's go there. And, I, and if you read the story carefully, some of his disciples are like, they, they figured out this is not a great idea to go back there. You know, you're a little bit late. Uh, you know, you, you could have moved, you could have acted swiftly, but you didn't. And one of his disciples says, oh, well, you know what, Lord, if we go back there, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill us. And then Jesus says, well, Lazarus is sleeping. I've got to go. Now, his disciples initially thought, oh, well, Lazarus is sleeping. We know he's sick, so he's probably just sleeping all day. Uh, and, but Jesus actually clarifies him, no, but Lazarus is dead. I've got to go. Sometimes the situations get worse before they get better. But here's the good news. Even if it looks like it is over, even if it looks like it is finished, there is no chance. You see, when you're in that situation, church, hear me very carefully. When you're in that situation where it's over, it's dead, and perhaps you've been waiting a long time for the miracle to take place, here is some good news for you, and you've got to hear this. In that moment where you have no strength left, when you have no resources left, when you have no one else to call, guess what? Jesus is on his way. Jesus is coming. Jesus is going to set you free. Jesus is going to heal you. Jesus is going to see you through. I love what the Bible says that when you go through the fire, when you go through the fire, it did not say you'll never go through fire. When you go through the fire, you will not be burnt. When you go through the floods, when you go through the floods, not if, when you go through the floods, you will not drown. God is our rescue. Easter reminds us of that. So I want to close. We'll bring this to an end by saying that this week and next week, we're going to be focusing on a couple of characters in the story. I want us to look at some of these characters because these characters represent us today, represent how we feel today, represent where we are today in the story. A story that in the beginning looks tragic, but at the end, God is glorified. So let's look at one of the first characters, and his name is Thomas. Anyone heard of Thomas? Thomas, I like to call him the butt Christian, the butt Christian. Have you ever met butt Christians before? Uh, I, I'm going to assume you have. John chapter 11, verse 16, this is Thomas. Then Thomas, he being called twin, said to his fellow disciples, Ah, let us go that we may die with him. Oh, come on, I love that. I love that. You might, you might be saying, well, what are you, where are you going with that? But I want you to see Thomas's response to the situation. Oh, well, you know what? Jesus, is, he's lost it. He's crazy. But anyway, let's go with them so we can all die. Have you ever been in that situation? Have you ever met people like that, that everything that comes out of their mouth, even though it might look like a step of faith, is actually negative? It's actually, it's actually depressing. Oh, my word, let's just go die. Have you ever met people like that? See, Doubting Thomas had this trait throughout the Scriptures. If we're honest with ourselves... We can relate to Thomas in some levels. Perhaps we've trusted God for something and it never happened. Perhaps our lives were a mess uh, and we want to get out the mess. Perhaps we've had a loved one that walked out on us, whatever it is. No matter what we've been through, there's, a, there's moments in our lives where we, we get to a place of doubt. But Thomas, however, takes it one step further. His doubting actually becomes an everyday every situation action it becomes his character to doubt everything that god wants to accomplish i call these people the but christians i might say for example god is good someone in the congregation or someone watching online might be there but 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 look at all the sickness in the world but but look at the coronavirus your your god is good but I might make a statement, you know, God is our provider. The but Christians get, yeah, but, but, Pastor Ryan, you, you don't understand my financial situation. I might say that God is going to defeat the coronavirus. You got those but Christians there, but, but, have you seen the figures? Have you seen how bad it looks? You see, in, in every church, in all over the world, you have what I call but Christians. Every time God wants to do something powerful, it's almost as if you hear this loud, and instead of an amen, you hear a but. But, pastor, God will provide. God will do great things. 
but. See, doubt is not unbelief. Doubt is not unbelief, but it's not faith either. It wavers between faith and unbelief. Unable to make its mind where it actually wants to be. What does the Bible speak about someone who is, who is uh, unable to make decisions? Someone who, who is one way and then the other way. Unstable in all of his ways. You understand, when you're unstable in all your ways, you, you're actually a danger. I want, it's, like, it's like, for example, let's, let's use this as an example. Imagine you hitchhiking. You're in Cape Town and you're hitchhiking, and you got your thumb going out both ways. So when someone stops, they don't know which direction you want to go in, because you don't know if you want to go to Joburg or Durban. You haven't made up your mind yet. Can I say this? You're going to stay where you are. Because the person going to Joburg, in your mind, you'll say to him, I don't know if I want to go to Durban. That guy's going to Joburg. He's going to Joburg. If you don't go to Joburg with him, you're going nowhere. The person that stops and is going to Durban, if you don't get in the car and go to Durban, make up your mind, let me just say, you're going to stay where you are. Do you know how many Christians have stayed where they are for many, many years? They've never grown. They've never matured. They've never taken a step of faith in their life before. Why? Because they butt Christians. I'm going to ask you to stop being a butt Christian and becoming a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Because when you follow him, I promise you one thing. He will lead you. He will guide you into bigger and greater things in your life. Stop being a butt Christian. When Peter saw faith, he actually walked on the water. He made a commitment with both his feet to step over the rim of the boat. You see, faith causes both feet to get out the boat. When you have unbelief, both feet stay in the boat. But when you are a doubter or a butt Christian, you keep one foot in the boat and one foot in the water and still you go nowhere. I don't want you to be a butt Christian anymore. I don't want to be like Thomas. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Easter reminds us, Easter reminds us that Jesus went all the way. He didn't just stop halfway. Jesus didn't doubt for one moment. He had absolute belief that God had the power to raise him from the dead. He believed that God could do big and great things. Easter reminds us that Jesus can bring back anything to life, even our faith. Maybe this corona, come on, we, we're ending now, we've finished. Maybe this coronavirus has caused some people to doubt. Maybe as you sit in your lounge, on your bedrooms, wherever you might be today, maybe fear has crept in. I want to remind you that Easter reminds us that Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. It reminds us that He is the all-conquering King of kings and Lord of lords. Easter reminds us that death could not hold Him down. I'm going to challenge you today. Let's not be a butt Christian anymore, but let's progress. Let's move forward for Jesus Christ. Listen to this. <clears throat> and I want to end off with this incredible verse. And this verse I want you to carry with you for the rest of the week. Romans chapter 1, verse 8 says this. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. That your faith, listen to these words, and I pray this is for you today. That your faith is spoken of throughout the world. Your faith spoken about throughout the whole world. My prayer that during this coronavirus, in 20 to 30 years time, our children and our grandchildren will speak about how the church was faithful and had faith in the midst of a crisis. I pray that there will be many testimonies that 20, 30, 40 years time, people will be speaking about the church of today. Not that we closed our doors, but that we opened our hearts to Jesus. So I want to encourage you right there where you are. I want you to bow your heads. I want us to pray. I know we're doing this through the internet. I know we're doing this through live stream. 
It's a little bit different to church, but I want you today to make a decision. God, I'm no longer a but Christian. I will follow you. I will walk with you. I'll even be in a lock-in with you. Because if you're with us, Lord, we will not fear. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person that's hearing this message today. I pray, Lord, that there'll be a release from the kingdom of heaven. That the Holy Spirit himself will begin to inspire and build his church up in a powerful, supernatural way. We thank you that, Lord, as we begin to focus on Easter, that, Lord, we will be reminded of everything that Easter provides for us. And that is good news. So, Father, bless this time. Bless everyone in their homes. Strengthen us, equip us to do big and great things for you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a reminder, please share this video if you can. If you want to, send it to close friends. There are a lot of people out there, church, that need hope. This message is all about hope. And I know that it will touch people's lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you. And see you soon.